it's the SEC's way of saying, if you make this amount of money, we don't care if you go and lose it. But if you make less than this amount of money, we want to protect the little guy. When you go on Tate's portal or you go on our investor dashboard and you fill out the paperwork at the very end, it'll say, how are you proving that you're accredited? And they have these third-party verification companies that are linked to our dashboards that will basically give you this letter for free. Welcome back to Passive Income Pilots, everyone. We are back, back in action, uh, here with my friend Ryan Gibson. How you doing, man? How's your summer been? Summer has been great. And I'm getting, getting out there, getting some flying in uh, for fun and uh, and having a great summer. Excellent. It's been beautiful weather here. Yeah. So. Pacific Northwest in the summer is insane. I um, got back from Europe. I uh, had about a two-week trip there. That was incredible. And we've been working really hard on three different deals we're launching and um, all sorts of stuff in the background. We've been packing our pipeline full of incredible guests that are going to be on this show in the next uh, few months. So I hope you got caught up on some of our previous episodes while, while we uh, gave you a little bit of a break. We, we really wanted to blitz in the beginning, get a ton of uh, valuable content on the platform. And now we're about to pick it up again. So anyway, Ryan, what are we talking yeah, about today? Yeah, well, before we get into today's show, I wanted to talk about our <clears throat> Facebook group. Yes. So we have a passive income pilots uh, accountability group, and it also adds tons of value. You can ask questions. We respond. We get on there. We we talk. So if you haven't joined our passive income pilots uh, Facebook page, tons of good content coming out on that. More to come. Um, you can set goals for the week. We hold you accountable. Things like that. So join that. And but without further ado, today's show, credited non-accredited, what does all this stuff mean, and how can you partake in investments when you're not an accredited investor? Perfect. There's some things that you could do uh, to get around that rule. So, Tate, you want to take us away, or do you want me to give the history here? Well, you give us the history, and then I can get into what an accredited investor is and how you qualify. Yeah, so it all starts with the uh, Secure and Exchange Commission uh, back in the 1930s, I believe. They, they made some rules that allowed people to invest in non-registered investments. That's what these are, syndications. Non-registered investments that require you to kind of go through a few hoops, so to speak. And out of this whole thing uh, was uh, born Regulation D. So when you think about the regulations and you think about accredited and non-accredited and all this other stuff, uh, we're all offering these uh, syndications or these investment opportunities into alternatives through something called an exemption, which as pilots, we're very familiar with that. So over the years, uh, it's always been typically 506B, uh, B as in Bravo, and that means that you have to have a pre-existing substantial relationship with the person you're going to do business with, and then you have to be a sophisticated investor, meaning that you have to be reasonably able to assess the offering. However, the sponsor is not able to contemplate or hold out to the public or advertise, for lack of better words, um, into the general uh, solicitation and, and market these offerings. Uh, because if you did, then you would be prohibited or banned from making this uh, exemption. So you could be non-accredited, which basically means you don't have to have a million dollars in net worth or uh, make a lot of income, 200000 or 300000 for joint filers, which Tate will jump into. So. Uh, what was really cool, though, is in 2012, the Obama administration signed the Jobs Act, which actually had some good stuff in it. One thing was the fact that you could generally solicit now, you could advertise these offerings, and then you could do this new thing called 506C, which allowed you to participate in, in these advertised offerings as a accredited investor only, and then the sponsor had to take reasonable steps to verify your accreditation status. This is really good and really bad. Well, obviously, we had Facebook and internet advertising and the advent of crowdfunding really take off. It allowed these businesses to not be the best kept secret out there, right? Like you don't want to be the best kept secret. That's not really your marketing strategies. Like no one knows who you are. So a lot of companies started advertising these syndications. And then companies made it really easy for people to get kind of accredited and get a letter and all that stuff that was required to go into that. But before I dive all into that, I'll let Tate kind of jump in from here and kind of take us the rest of the way on what happened with accredited investors. Yeah. So an accredited investor is simply 
a, an individual person who makes over $200,000 a year for the past two years, or if you're married, it's over $300,000 a year as a joint filing couple uh, for the past two years. So basically, if you made over $300,000 of earned income, it doesn't really matter where, where that's coming from, but if you have $300,000 as a married couple, then you're an accredited investor. You also can qualify via net worth, and that is going to be a million dollar net worth excluding your primary residence. So you can't count the home that you live in, but if you have a million dollar net worth outside of your primary residence, you also qualify. So there are many more people than, than you'd imagine can qualify via the net worth requirement. That makes you an accredited investor. <clears throat> and basically what that means is it's the SEC saying you have to be this tall to ride this ride. And, you know, if if you are not an accredited investor, if you don't meet this threshold, you are relegated to only investing in the public markets, essentially, things that are regulated by the SEC or something that falls under 506B, which you have to have a pre-existing relationship with that sponsor in order to participate in. It also means that if you are going to participate outside of the registered securities, things are, that are regulated by the SEC, that you are sophisticated enough to understand the nuances of that deal. Where this really comes into play, I find, is and is particularly the 506B versus 506C, and and uh, is is when people say these real estate syndication deals sound too good to be true. Why haven't I heard about this? Well, the answer is because until 2012, nobody could tell you about them. It was only 11 years ago that that these things actually, and I don't like the term general solicitation because it's you know nobody's going out there and putting syndication deals on a billboard. The issue was. You couldn't talk about it anywhere in any public forum. So if I had just met Ryan and I was a syndicator and I had a great deal, I couldn't talk to him about it until we had already built a pre-existing relationship. And the SEC has sort of uh, relaxed on these, these rules and, uh, well, maybe not relaxed on the rules, but their, their definition of a pre-existing relationship is pretty loose, uh, it tends to be a, a phone call and um, you know a bit of a waiting period until a deal is presented. But in any case, the 506C allowed for general solicitation. An accredited investor just means if you make this amount of money, you can invest in venture capital, angel investing, all sorts of, of deals that are outside of the public markets. It's the SEC's way, way of saying, if you make this amount of money, we don't care if you go and lose it. But if you make less than this amount of money, we want to protect the little guy. And while that's well-intentioned, it tends to be a rich get richer kind of game. Because if you make over that amount of money and you are an accredited investor, you have access to this ocean of amazing private equity deals that non-accredited investors don't. Now, here's a question for you, Ryan. How do I know that I'm accredited? Do I get a letter in the mail? Does the SEC send me a bottle of champagne and a card? <laughs> the answer is absolutely not, right? It's very yeah. uh, anticlimactic. You know, a lot of people don't even know that they've crossed over that threshold. They didn't even know that the threshold existed. But if you're going to invest in a deal that requires accreditation, you will have to prov provide proof that you are accredited. That letter is good for five years. But R Ryan, you want to walk us through a couple of different ways that you can prove accreditation? Yeah. So it, obviously when you invest in a syndication, you don't have to have your accreditation sort of ready to go. But if you do, that's helpful. But it, it, when you go and you sign up for a deal, you're going to have to go through and answer a few questions and upload some documents. So when you go on Tate's portal or you go on our investor dashboard and you fill out the paperwork at the very end, it'll say, how are you proving that you're accredited? And they have these third-party verification companies that are linked to our dashboards that will basically give you this letter for free, which right. is really nice. And so the letter is good for five years. And so kind of once you go through this process, you know, it's a one and done thing. It's, you know, five years is a long time. Um, and so basically the letter is good for five years and that will help you um, prove that you're accredited. And eventually, the offering that you're investing in, the, the syndicator is going to want to see that proof, um, ideally before you f send in funds um, uh, for the investment. So 
there's nothing you need to do. There's nothing you need to really uh, have to do pr preemptively here. You just have to know that you're meet the definition. And then as you kind of go through the, the sign up process for a syndication at the very end, you usually have a little link that you can click on. And you, again, you might have to upload a couple of tax returns or some W-2 uh, bank statements or, or otherwise to kind of either prove your income or your net worth. Right. And then a third party validates your accreditation. That takes all the onus off of the operator from having to like do that, right? So it's a really helpful thing for for us to have that third party verification part signed off. Right. We have a what's one page uh, accreditation template that we also provide to a lot of investors. Uh, you can simply give that to your CPA or your attorney. They put their their license number on it, sign it, and that qualifies. So if you uh, if you have a CPA or an attorney that you have a close relationship with that can take 60 seconds just to fill out this form, send it back to us, that qualifies it. And so when you're going through the process to make an investment, uh, it's very quick. Uh, we use a different dashboard than, uh, than uh, Spartan does. But um, when you go through the investment process, basically you, you select what kind of um, entity you're investing with, whether it's going to be your, your own individual person, uh, as joint tenants with your spouse or as an LLC, a trust, an IRA, so so on and so forth. Uh, you go electronically sign the documents. And then the step there that would be missing, if you had already gotten that letter and submitted it to us, then you could just verify and say, hey, nothing has changed. My letter is still good. And um, you know nothing has changed my accreditation status. And you go right through to funding. Uh, if you haven't done that yet, it's no big deal. You just click that link, like Ryan said, and uh, there's a third party company that you can upload those documents and within 12 to 24 hours, they'll send you a letter back. The other cool way of doing it is you can simply have your attorney, lawyer or CPA, financial advisor. So long as they're in good standing, put their registration number at the bottom, say uh, Tate Durier meets the definition of an accredited investor per the SEC. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. You don't and even need letter, our form. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. So if you have already have, so can, if they have a form that they, they already use that that suffices but if they need the template we have it readily available so what if you're not accredited let's, talk let's about dive that. into that yes so uh actually i think the first offering tate that you jumped in um and and invested with us on mm -hmm. was a non-accredited investor it, it was it, it allowed and that's not the way that people bring it up they they call it sophisticated i'm you know so what does this does your offering allow sophisticated investors right. that basically means that you understand the deal. You understand how this works. You understand about investing, but you're not. You don't actually meet the definition of an accredited investor. It doesn't mean you're not sophisticated. Right. So, get, getting into the terminology here on that. So, in that instance, uh, Tate and I met. Uh, we skied. We hung out at a mm -hmm. conference. We got to know each other from flying. We we worked together for a little while. We had some conversations uh, before presenting the offering to him. So, um, if you want to be eligible for 506b offerings that spartan puts out uh jump on a call with one of our teammates get to know us we're going to ask you some questions um you know what's your experience in investing and what's your background um you know what kind of deals have you done and and we won't be presenting to you on that call any specific deals uh to invest in because that would be kind of um tripping the offering that it, it's intent uh, which is you have to get to know somebody before you present an offering to them and then after that, uh, we can start presenting offerings to you. So um, now when you do end up investing, you'll have to fill out what's called the purchaser, purchaser qualification form, which is going to ask you 11 basic questions on, you know, what is your background? It's kind of like building a little resume, a form fill resume of like, what's your background in investing? Have you, you know, what do you have, um, you know, in your portfolio right now? Uh, so just some questions that kind of help us understand you a little bit more and your reasonableness of, of uh, investing in the offering, your, your level of sophistication. So purchaser qualification, uh, a few questions get answered. You can fill that out whenever and then have that pre-existing substantial relationship with you. So Excellent. that's how you could invest in non accredited. And we do do 506B offerings at Spartan. So it's something new that we're rolling out this year uh, that will help our investors who aren't accredited get the opportunity to participate in some of these uh, really nice institutional quality investments in real estate. Definitely. So we're going a little bit of the opposite direction. I'd like to sort of fill in the gaps on, you know, because we are a fund, you know, Ryan is an operator. 
uh, and they are one of the about six to seven operators who we work with. We do a ton of due diligence on, on the operating partners that we, we work with. But because we're a fund, if Ryan runs a 506C, which requires accredited investors, we can't go and run a 506B and accept non-accredited investors. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, conversely, if he runs a 506B, we could run a 506B. We could also run a 506C saying, hey, we're only accepting accredited investors, but we would not be able to tell anybody about it who we didn't have a pre-existing relationship with because that flows through to us. Because of this, we are rotating to be more of an accredited investor only platform. We're, we're sort of moving away from these 506Bs. Two reasons. One, unfortunately, just from a liability standpoint, you know, we do a ton of due diligence on our, on our offerings and anything that ends up on our platform, we're very, very confident in. However, if we do have a deal go sideways, um, you know, this is something that our SEC attorney is just sort of pushing us on saying, you know, if you have a deal that goes sideways and someone complains to the SEC, it's not always a good look if you have, you know, a bunch of non-accredited investors. There's also the issue of flow through. Um, each of these offerings can only accept 35 non-accredited investors. So if we run a fund for Ryan's 506B offering, you already have 30 non-accredited investors. Technically, I could only bring in five because that would hit the project level 35 non-accredited investors. The other reason is because most of the operators that we work with run primarily 506Cs. So this is not the best news for our non-accredited investors. The good news is that I highly recommend the Spartan team. We're, we're actually launching a fund for uh, Spartan's 2023 growth fund this week. Uh, very, very excited about that. Um, the other good news is that if you're an airline pilot, it's not going to be long until you're accredited because uh, the way the industry is going right now, I mean, it's just, you know, with all the new contracts that we're getting, uh, Everybody is reaching accreditation status. So if you haven't checked, uh, look back your tax returns, take a look at your pay, pay statements, and you can do a little bit of internal financial planning in terms of, hey, do you want to make maybe make that upgrade a little bit sooner to reach that accreditation status or fly a couple extra trips to hit that $300,000 a year if you're married or $200,000 a year if you're single? Um, you know, you really shouldn't be all that far off of it if you, if you haven't hit that status yet. Yeah, I'd also like to offer on the uh, Passive Income Pilots Facebook group, we uploaded a personal financial statement uh, template. So if you're not sure, uh, you can go on the uh, Passive Income Pilots Facebook group. You can download an Excel file that allows you to input all of your investments, your income, things like that. So you can actually tally up and see if you're an accredited investor or not. So from the net worth super standpoint. cool tool. Uh, we'll have more stuff like that posted on the Facebook group. I think we had uh, a pilot that was going for a loan and really wanted to have a good template for personal financial statement. And this is one that our company at Spartan has used for the last decade uh, for going and getting loans. And, and what's great is once you fill this out once, you really don't have to do it again. You can just do light updates to it and that'll help you keep track of your net worth, your liquidity. And if you are going for investment loans for real estate, you can use that as kind of a tool to uh, apply for your loan application. And I found that most lenders don't make you fill out the whole thing again. They can just accept that PFS uh, template, that personal financial statement. So excellent. Well, hopefully yeah. that makes a little bit more sense if you're, you know, subscribing to one of our offerings and then all of a sudden you're being asked to upload tax documents. That sort of demystifies what that is and why, why uh, you know, you're being asked to do that. Um, and by the way, we don't get that information. So you're Correct. not sharing any of that personal information with us. That's all going to a third party Correct. company and they don't. And all we hear from them is he's either accredited yeah, or not. Exactly. Yep. So, and actually we don't even, I don't even think we hear if you're not. That's true. But, That's true. We just wouldn't, yeah. So it we just, just wouldn't get a letter. Yeah. We just wouldn't get a letter. Right. So, um, so it's, you know, it's all in confidence. It's all third party. Um, so you're not really sharing that information. We don't have your information when that comes in. So that's all just uh, de-identified. And again, if the letter uh, will show success when you're done. That's a great point. Yeah. Excellent. Well, anything else to add to this before we drive it home? No. If you have any questions about accreditation status, uh, hit us up. Um, Passive income pilots at gmail.com, or you can go on the Facebook page, yeah. leave, leave us a note, leave us a question, and we'll jump right on it. So, one more note on the passive income pilots Facebook group. You know, when we built this, 
what I felt like we were really lacking in this space was a community, you know, somewhere where, you know, we have one on one contact at Turbine with all of our investors, but the investors don't have contact with each other. And I really wanted to build this community where there was lateral engagement between investors, where people could pose questions, get answers, uh, throw their opinions on on things. If, if there's confusion on anything that can prompt us to bring people onto the podcast where experts can can clear up any confusion on things. So, so really encourage not only to join it, but to engage, you know, if you have questions, post it, because I'm sure if you have that question, other people have the same question. So anyway, look forward to seeing everybody on there. Yeah, we have over 265 members as of this recording. Yes. So let's see how big we can get it. Yes. So really good, uh, really good turnout. Excellent. We'll see you on the next one. Thanks again, Ryan. Talk soon. Take care. Mm-hmm.